Okay, now you might still be thinking, well, okay, Dr. Petrie, what does any of that have to do with the Assumption Mary? Okay, I can see how she's the new Ark of the Covenant, but what's the relationship between that and the feast today? Well, in order to see that, you got to go to the first reading. So let's look at the gospel in light of the first reading. And in this case, the first reading isn't from the Old Testament. It's from the book of Revelation, chapter 12. Ele actually, chapter 11 and 12. It's the end of 11, starting with verse 19, going into the beginning of chapter 12. This is John the, John the Evangelist, or John the, uh, sometimes you'll hear him called John the Revelator. That's an old phrase. Uh, phrase. But um, John, the author of the Apocalypse, this is his vision of the heavenly Ark of the Covenant. Now, before I read this vision, let me, let me just put it in context for a second here. In first century Judaism, everyone understood that after David put the ark in the temple and Solomon built the temple, that the ark remained there for hundreds of years until the sixth century before Christ. Because in the sixth century, the Babylonians came and they destroyed the temple. They burned Jerusalem to the ground, right? And according to the book of Maccabees, chapter, second Maccabees, chapter two, before the temple was destroyed, Jeremiah the prophet, who was also a priest, took the Ark of the Covenant out of the temple, because he knew the Babylonians were coming to destroy it, and he brought it to Mount Nebo, right, which is the mountain that Moses had gone up to see the Promised Land. It's on the eastern side of the River Jordan. It's not Mount Sinai in the Arabian Desert. This is Mount Nebo, which overlooked the Promised Land, right, where Moses saw promised land, but he died on that mountain. He didn't get to go in. So Jeremiah brings the ark. He goes east across the Jordan, brings it to Mount Nebo, and he hides it there in the mountain in a cave. And 2 Maccabees chapter 2 tells us that Jeremiah said that the location of that ark would remain hidden until God revealed his mercy and, and until the glory cloud came, came down again from heaven. So that, if you fast forward to the time of Jesus, these traditions uh, about the Ark of the Covenant, it would have were well known. Everybody would have known, number one, that there was no Ark in the temple, that the temple rebuilt after the Babylonian exile was missing something really important. It was missing the Ark of the Covenant. It would be like, today like you going into um, St. Peter's in Rome and there being no tabernacle, no blessed sacrament. It'd still be a holy place, still be a beautiful place, but it would be empty of the thing that most makes it holy the presence of Christ in the Eucharist. Right? Same thing was true of the temple. It was a holy place, the sacrifices were offered there, but there was no ark. The second thing that every Jew knew at the time of Christ was that one day the ark would come back. According to Jeremiah's prophecy in 2 Maccabees, its location would be revealed, but nobody knew exactly what had happened to it because when Jeremiah puts it in the cave, the location of the cave disappears. People can't find it. They don't, they don't know. It miraculously disappears. So there was this expectation that one day the location of the Ark would be revealed. And of course, that led to this day to the quest for the lost Ark of the Covenant. It's a very popular uh, theme. So what happens in Revelation 11 is that John sees where the Ark is. Its location is unveiled to him. And the location that it gives here is not of the earthly Ark of Mount Nebo. It's of a Ark in heaven. This is what he sees. And this is the reading for today, Revelation 11, 19. He says this, quote, Then God's temple in heaven was opened, and the ark of his covenant was seen within his temple. All right, pause here for just a second. In order to understand this verse, you have to understand that in ancient Judaism, the idea was that the earthly temple was a kind of replica or analogy of the true temple that was in heaven. And just as in the earthly temple, the ark of the covenant is within the holy of holies, the innermost sanctuary, so too... When John says he saw the temple open, what he's really seeing is the doors of the temple open and he's able to see all the way into the Holy of Holies. And what he sees in there is the ark within his temple. But it's not the earthly temple, it's the temple in heaven. All right? So that's what's going on here. Now, what's fascinating about this is as soon as John sees the ark in the temple in heaven, all of a sudden the image switches and now he sees a woman in heaven almost as if the two images are superimposed on one another. It's something that happens frequently in the book of Revelation, where John will sometimes use two symbols to describe one reality, right? And scholars have suggested this, that 
The ark and the woman are just two ways of talking about this one reality. So once he's seen the ark in heaven in the temple, now all of a sudden he sees a woman in heaven. And this is what he says, quote, A great portent appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. She was with child and cried out in her pangs of birth in anguish for delivery. And another portent appeared in heaven, behold, a great red dragon, with seven heads and ten horns, and seven diadems upon his heads. His tail swept down a third of the stars of heaven, and cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was about to bear a child, that he might devour her child when she brought it forth. And she brought forth a male child, one who was to rule all the nations with a rod of iron. But her child was caught up to God and his throne, and the woman fled into the wilderness, where she has a place prepared by God. Then it skips down to verse 10. I, John, heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ have come. Okay, so what's going on here? Why is this the first reading for the Feast of the Solemnity of the Assumption? And the answer is simple. If Mary is the true Ark of the Covenant, right, on earth, at the Annunciation, the Holy Spirit overshadows her like it overshadowed the Ark, right, and God begins to dwell in her, in Christ, then when John sees this mysterious apocalyptic vision of the ark in heaven and of a woman in heaven who's the mother of the Messiah, right, and who's wearing a crown of 12 stars, she's a heavenly queen. Since ancient times, this vision has been interpreted as a vision of Mary in heaven as mother of the Messiah, and not just as the mother, but as the heavenly Ark of the Covenant. And I'll, I'll quote from ancient writers in just a second, but I just want to, I want to help you understand that. If you think about it in this way, if Mary's body is the dwelling place of God on earth, if Mary's body is the true Ark of the Covenant, then it's fitting that at the end of her life, she would not, that body, that sacred ark, would not remain on earth in a human grave or a human tomb, but that it would be taken up to its rightful place in the heavenly holy of holies in the heavenly temple of God. That's the logic behind choosing this vision of the heavenly ark of the covenant on the feast of the Assumption of Mary. Because she's not just the mother of the Messiah, she's also the ark of the covenant. And the Ark of the Covenant isn't just her soul. It's her body, right? So all of us, you know, ordinary Christians, when we die, our hope is that our soul will enter into heaven and that on the last day we'll receive our bodies, right, in the resurrection of the dead. But the church teaches that Mary has a singular gift because her body was the Ark of the Covenant on earth. It's fitting that her body and her soul would be caught up into heaven to dwell in the heavenly holy of holies in the heavenly temple with Christ for all eternity. And that what John is giving us here in this vision is an apocalyptic description of Mary that reveals her to be, among other things, the queen mother of the kingdom of God and the true ark of the covenant. So again, I don't have time to get into this in detail. Please, I, I cover all this in depth in Jesus and the Jewish Roots of Mary. You can, you can check it out there. For now, that's just the basic point. Now, that's the first reading for today. What about the responsorial psalm? 